Well, it's finally time to release the video that everyone's been asking me about, the DIY BMS current monitor. This has taken way longer than I expected as I managed to uh, damage a nerve in my back. So that derailed the project for a few weeks. If you've watched the previous video on the design of the current monitor, you'll know that it's been designed to be tightly integrated with the DIY BMS controller and allows you to accurately monitor both voltage and current of the load you put through your battery banks. There are a few minor gotchas on this board, which I'll run through in a little while. First, let's build the new monitor board. You can download the files as usual from GitHub. I've started to use GitHub Actions to automatically generate the files needed for PCB assembly. These can be found in the export folder. I'm also generating an interactive bill of materials document. I found this is really useful when building the boards by hand. I've used my soldering mat to hold the capacitors and resistors in the order they appear in the BOM. So once I start placing the parts, it's easy just to go down the list. So this board build started out like most others. Using solder paste, I attempted to put dots of solder onto the board, ready to place the components. I bought a new tube of solder paste just for this video. It started off well, but unfortunately that's when the problem started. Quite soon the nozzle jammed, so I swapped out for a larger size, and that was my first mistake. After that I ended up placing way too much solder on the board. This is also lead free solder, which I really, really don't like. So time for a montage of me making a mess of the board and smearing solder paste everywhere. Now all the passive parts are installed onto the circuit board, ready for soldering. Whilst I've got your attention, let me show you another board I designed as a bit of fun. I made this as a novel programming adapter between the controller and the modules, and for this purpose it works great. However, for opening beer bottles, not so good. Safe to say, I won't be selling these. So I'm now attempting to flow the solder paste. As you can see, it made a right mess on the board. Being lead free, it doesn't want to melt either, but I managed to coax it in the end. I'll need to invest in a reflow oven if I plan on doing a lot more of this stuff. I promise I'll normally do a better job of soldering than this. For some reason, as soon as the camera comes out, everything goes wrong. If you uh, do plan on using JLC PCB to assemble these boards, uh, they can do most of the basic components for you. However, they don't stock some of the chips, particularly the INA228, so you will always have some manual soldering to do. So by now I should have swapped back to the smaller nozzle on the, sol on the solder paste, but I didn't. So here I am splashing the paste all over the board. No wonder I get bridges across the pins. 
The LM5009 and the INA228 chips have very small pin spacings. These video clips are actually taken under a microscope and this is the fourth monitor board I have built, so you would think I know better by now. Okay, let's tidy up this soldering mess and also put some alcohol to remove the flux. On the front of the board, there are a couple of components to add, a red and green LED and an inductor. No dramas here, I'm using a standard soldering iron to do this. After the inductor is soldered on, you can add the remaining through hole parts, like the screw terminals, header pins, and the two wires for the shunt resistor. I've used one and a half millimeter wire to connect the shunt to the circuit and, and also added two crimp ring terminals which are then screwed onto the shunt. Once assembled you can use some short bolts to attach the circuit board and shunt together. Careful not to over tighten them. So that brings me onto the gotchas of this current monitor. The first issue, not all the parts you need, you need can be assembled by JLC PCB. So you will always have some manual soldering, including the tiny INA228 chips. The second issue is the use of a newer at tiny chip, in this case the 1614 model. These are really powerful and low cost chips, lower cost than the at tiny 841 I've used in previous designs. However the downside is that they use a different programming protocol called UPDI. UPDI. You can use an old Arduino or similar to emulator programmer, and you only need three wires to connect the programmer to, to the uh, circuit device. So the board is now fully populated. I'm going to carefully power it up for the first time using a bench power supply set at 12 volts and 40 milliamps. This way, should there be a short circuit, the bench power supply will current limit and save me blowing something up. So no shorts detected. The board is drawing less than one milliamp. So far, so good. As I previously mentioned, I'm using an old Arduino Uno board as an UPDI programmer. I've disconnected the power supply to the current monitor whilst I do this, as the board will be given power from the Uno board. Using platform IO on the computer, I'm sending the current monitor code into the AtTiny chip. When finished, the current monitor gives five red and then six green flashes as part of its boot up sequence. This means the code can communicate with the chips on the board and all is good. The circuit board is designed to be DIN rail mounted, just like the controller. The current monitor uses these generic PCB holders. Unfortunately, the one I first bought was too small. So I thought I'd ordered a 100mm rail from AliExpress. However, it turned out to be a 1000mm. Easily solved though.
So after cutting it up, it's just a case of sliding the PCB into the holder and screwing on the end caps. So there we have it, a fully assembled DIY BMS current monitor, ready for connecting to the controller. Behind me you can see my garage and workshop and the temporary solar panels I've installed on the roof. Let's go inside and take a look and see what they're up to. Right, we're inside my garage now. Sorry it's a bit dark and it's probably a bit noisy in the background as well. All my neighbours seem to be out jet washing their cars today, so we'll see what, uh, what happens. Um, the mess behind you, you can see, is a uh, leftover power wall, 18650 cells testing and things like that. I've decided to give up with the 18650s, um, so I, I, I sold most of the ones I, I had. I've kept a few back just for a few projects here and there. I've got a pile of scrap ones as well, which I need to get rid of. But anyway, we're not here for that. Um, above that, what you can actually see is the um, inputs from the test panels on the, on the garage roof. Um, and what I've done is put the DRI BMS con uh, current monitor uh, through the... Uh, power leads from the uh, solar panels before they go into the inverter. So what we can do with that is check the voltage and current that's coming from the solar panels into the inverter and, and log that over time and see what it looks like. So it shows you the flexibility that the current monitor doesn't just have to be used for uh, battery bank monitoring, you could also use it for solar inputs or any other sort of uh, uh, current and load monitoring that you need to, need to use. So what you can see here is very precariously balanced on the the shelf. It's the DIY BMS current monitor um, and the uh, red leads are for the solar panel inputs. It's the positive cable which you can see is running through the shunt. Um, we've also got four cables running off to the RS485 and then the power inputs for the current monitor itself. The current monitor is, is just actually powered by the solar panels directly so um, there's no additional power requirements needed. It will gather its own power from the battery or the solar panels that it's connected to. This is the uh, controller. Um, so I've just got a single cell battery on there at the moment, just as a dummy load. And you can see that the TFT screen has been updated to uh, show you the current monitor. So you've got the amps and voltage and the uh, amps in and amps out, along with the wattage. A big thank you to my Patreons who have enabled the current monitor board to be designed and have helped to fund the prototypes of this and the various parts of the DIY BMS. If you wish to support the project with a few dollars a month, the links will be in the video description. If you like the content of this video, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel. It allows me to see what you enjoy and decide what topics to cover in future videos. With the addition of the new current monitor, several changes to the controller interface were required. The latest version has a new menu option specifically for the current monitor. Although there are a lot of fields on screen, there are only two sections which are really important. First, you need to enable the current monitor in the RS485 section. Only a single current monitor is currently supported by the uh, controller, but this could be increased in the future. After this is completed, you will then need to specify the size of shunt you have connected. In my case, I'm using a 150 amp shunt, which has a 50 millivolt output scale. Other scales are supported, although you are only going to get the best results when using a 50 millivolt shunt. The current monitor board will operate in the background independently of the controller, and every 5 seconds the controller talks to the monitor and gets the latest values. The monitor board has its own output relay, and several of the options on the screen control that, but that's the topic for a separate video. It's worth noting that at the moment you cannot have relay rules triggered using the current monitor readings. This will be introduced in the future via a software update to the controller. The values from the current monitor are for display purposes only at the moment. These values are stored in the SD card logs if you've got those enabled and they're also sent via MQTT for login purposes. Here you can see the EMON CMS system from Open Energy Monitor and it's receiving the MQTT data. On screen is a simple graph of the power from my two test solar panels and the total amp power count. This is calculated by the current monitor itself, which continuously samples the voltage and current multiple times per second to get the most accurate readings. I've also introduced a couple of new features to this version of the controller code. The first is a layout change to the information panels on the front page. I've moved the lower priority information panels to the bottom of the page, keeping the useful information at the top. You will also notice that warning messages are no longer always visible across the top of the page. Instead, these will appear as needed and then disappear after 10 or 15 seconds. 
and number of forum issues related to getting errors when trying to save settings in, in the controller interface. This occurs when a web page gets out of sync with the controller backend. A new warning message is now shown should this happen, and to resolve you simply refresh the page. One of the biggest new features is the support for multiple languages. You can now select which language to display in the web interface from the, slot, the uh, drop down list. Once you've saved the setting, refresh the page for the settings to take effect. Thank you to a number of my Patreons for submitting language translation files. The translations are not perfect yet, but are a great start. We've covered a lot of topics in this video. I'm sure there'll be many questions. So please ask in the forum, and the link will be in the video description. Also a big thank you to my Patreon supporters who've helped create what you've seen.